Good morning, everyone. We are here this morning for our read aloud of the week, and we are going to continue on with our Seymour Simon books, which are nonfiction. And remember, as we are looking through the text, we're going to really pay close attention to the photographs and also to the text to learn what our author is talking about and to really figure out what kind of information we can learn from the text. So last week we read about dolphins and about penguins. And this week we are going to read our same author, Seymour Simon. And today's story, we're going to learn some facts about dogs. So it says all about puppyhood, their five senses, types of breeds, and more. So those are just a few things that we're going to talk about today with dogs, right? And at the end, you will have your writing assignment, which will ask you to write at least five facts about dogs that you learned from the text, and then two additional questions that you still have. So as I'm reading, I want you to really pay close attention to the photographs and to the text and figure out what kind of new information you can learn that you might not already know about dogs. The domestic dog is the most popular pet in the world. Tens of millions of dogs live with people as pets, working dogs or guard dogs. People and dogs have been together for thousands of years. We have shared shelter and food. We have hunted together, played together, and worked together. Scientists believe that dogs developed from wolves that had learned to live close to people. Eventually, five breeds of dogs emerged. Huge guard mastiffs, wolf-like dogs, sheep herding dogs, greyhounds, and pointer dogs used for hunting. Today, there are more than 400 breeds. Despite their differences, all dogs, from the tiny Chihuahua to the Great Dane, belong to the subspecies Cantus lupus familiaris. Many dogs are fast and can run long distances. Some racing dogs, such as the Greyhound, can run more than 40 miles per hour. The fastest human distance runner can run only 15 miles per hour. Large domestic dogs have powerful, graceful bodies. Using their strong hind legs, some dogs can jump over a fence several times their own height. Dogs have strong teeth and jaws that are good for tearing meat. A big dog can bite 10 times harder than a person can. Dogs are able to swallow much larger hunks of food than humans are able to swallow. Dogs eat almost anything. A pet dog will eat meat or table scraps or dog chow made partly from grains. Hold this up a little bit so you guys can see the whole book. Dogs have five senses, just as we do. But dogs are much more sensitive than we are. A dog can identify a friend from a stranger just by sniffing. You have five million smell cells in your nose. A German Shepherd or a Bloodhound has more than two hundred million smell cells in its nose. A bloodhound can follow an animal's or a pet or a person's odor trail hours after it has been made. A dog can hear noises that are four times farther away than the noises you can hear. That's why a watchdog barks before you hear any noise. A dog can hear a dog whistle easily, but you can barely hear it. Dogs' eyes are very sensitive to movement. If you stand still, a dog may not notice you, but an insect that moves in the grass will attract its attention. Dogs see mostly gray tones, but they can see some colors, such as the color red.
Dogs are very intelligent and they learn quickly. A dog instinctively knows how to get along with other dogs. In a pack, dogs have ranks. The leader is the dominant dog or boss. The others are submissive dogs or followers. Pet dogs usually behave toward their human owner the same way that they would behave toward the boss dog. When dogs meet, they sniff each other. Sniffing lets a dog know all about another dog, its age, gender, male or female, and rank. When a boss dog meets a follower dog, it shows dominance by raising its head, ears, and tail. A follower dog shows submission by crouching down or rolling over on its back. Dogs don't use words the way people do. Dogs use different sounds, from angry growling, to happy barking, to upset whimpering, to express their feelings. Learning dog talk will help you understand whether your pet dog is hungry or wants to go out for a walk. <laughs> Female dogs usually can have babies by the time they are one year old. After mating with a male dog, a female dog gives birth to a litter of puppies about nine weeks later. Small dogs have litters of about four puppies. Large dogs can have eight or more puppies in their litters. A mother dog seems to know exactly what to do when her puppies are born. She bites through the umbilical cord that attaches each puppy to her. Then she licks the puppy. Now it can breathe and start suckling. It takes less than two hours for each puppy to be born. Puppies are born both blind and deaf. So that means they can't see or hear when they're first born. For its first week, the puppy just suckles and sleeps. At two weeks, its eyes open. At three weeks, it can move around, focus its eyes, and hear sounds. At four weeks, the puppy starts playing with its litter mates. When you pick up a puppy, it wiggles. It may squeak. The puppy is tiny, but you can feel its muscles moving. Its skin feels warm and dry. At five to six weeks, the puppy has all its first teeth, which are called milk teeth. It is ready to eat puppy meal or cereal with milk. Between six and ten weeks, the puppy begins exploring its surroundings. It should stay with its mother until it is at least eight to ten weeks old. By then, the puppy has stopped nursing. Of all the dog breeds, hounds may have had the longest ties with people. That means they're the closest to people. Hounds were the earliest hunting dogs. People bred them to hunt by sight or smell. Sight or gaze hounds, such as the greyhound and salukai, can use their keen eyesight to spot game from a long distance. Long-legged hounds are also great runners and can run down swift animals. Scent hounds, like the dachshund and bloodhound, track prey by smelling the ground for odors. Scent hounds usually have short, strong legs, long heads with big floppy ear flaps and big noses. Their sense of smell is as much as one million times better than your sense of smell. Many modern breeds of hounds are no longer used as hunters. They are kept as pets some hounds, such as beagles and bassets, tend to roam. To keep them at home, you need a lot of space and good fences. Sporting dogs usually have keen senses of smell and sight, so that means they're really, really good. Different breeds of sporting dogs range in size from small spaniels to large setters, pointers, and retrievers. Spaniels are intelligent, small to medium-sized dogs that make excellent pets. They have long noses and, like scent hounds, they have big floppy ear flaps. Spaniels locate and retrieve, and they are also used 
to flush birds from their hiding places in tall grass. Different kinds of spaniels do different things. When they spot game, pointers and setters direct their muzzles toward the hunted animal. They are trained to set or stand still for as long as an hour. Retrievers are strong dogs that locate and bring back game. They are usually good swimmers. Most retrievers, such as the Golden and Labrador, make very fine pets because they can be trained easily. Terriers are small, lively dogs that were first bred in the British Isles. They were used to hunt burrowing animals such as rabbits, foxes, and rats. Terriers were so popular that many European artists painted them. They were also mascots in British military units. Some terriers even won medals for their service in the British Army. Terriers are bouncy, friendly dogs that bark a lot. Because they always seem ready to play, these short-legged, stocky dogs make good pets. Specially trained breeds of working and herding dogs help people all over the world. German shepherds and sheep dogs herd sheep and cattle. Malamutes and huskies pull sleds across the snow in Alaska. Doberman pinchers and Rottweilers act as watchdogs. St. Bernards can locate people lost in the snow. Guide dogs help visually impaired people find their way. Bloodhounds assist the police by sniffing for drugs or bombs in cars or at airports. For centuries, farmers and herdsmen have used dogs to help guard and move their flocks. Many countries have their own breed of herding dog. In the United States, the Border Collie is a common herding dog. Non-sporting dogs are as different from one another as you can imagine. They range from the friendly Dalmatian with its white coat and black spots to the deeply wrinkled Sharpei or Chinese fighting dog. The Chow Chow has a blue black mouth and tongue. The Bichon Frise is a fluffy white dog. The Bulldog looks tough but has a gentle manner. Still another is the Hasa Apso, a watchdog and a symbol of good fortune in Tibetan temples. Poodles are one of the most popular non-sporting dogs. They are intelligent, good-natured, friendly, and very loyal. Just what people look for in a pet. Because their curly hair doesn't shed but keeps growing, poodles have to be clipped regularly. Poodles vary in size. Standard poodles weigh as much as 70 pounds. Miniature and toy poodles can weigh less than 10 pounds. Toy dogs are kept mostly as lap dogs and pets. The English toy spaniel is a mini version of a full-size dog. Other toy dogs, such as the Chihuahua and the snub-nosed pug, don't resemble any large dogs. That means they don't look like any large dogs. 4,000 years ago, the Chinese kept lion dogs that looked like the Pekingese dogs we have today. Maltese dogs have been found in Egyptian tombs and have been depicted in early Roman paintings. The royal families of England, France, and Russia often include their pet toy dogs in paintings. Some toy dogs were bred to perform specific jobs. During the Middle Ages, nobles who lived in cold castles and stone buildings sometimes used toy dogs to warm their feet. The Tibetan Spaniel could turn prayer wheels. The tiny turnspit was trained to run on a wheel attached to a spit. As the spit turned, the game on the spit was roasted over a fire.
Mixed breed dogs or mutts are all kinds of shapes, colors, and sizes. Sometimes mutts are even friendlier and better tempered than purebreds. They may also adapt more easily to different surroundings. A mutt is a very special dog. No other dog is exactly like it. When you adopt a mutt as a puppy, you usually don't know who its parents or grandparents are. Sometimes you can tell how big a mutt will become by the size of its paws. Dogs have different personalities and behaviors. The way a dog is raised and trained also affects its personality and behavior. A dog doesn't have to be a purebred to make a wonderful pet. There are many ways you can get a pet dog. A dog owner you know may offer you a puppy from a new litter. If you adopt a dog from a local animal shelter, make sure the animals there look healthy and well cared for and ask about the dog you wish to adopt. The dogs are usually given away for free or for a small donation to the shelter. If you wanna buy a purebred dog, ask a pet owner or someone at a local kennel club to recommend a good breeder. Breed rescue clubs sometimes provide foster homes to purebreds that have been abandoned or given away. A puppy needs someone to care for it, to feed it, train it, walk it, and pet it. A person needs to spend a lot of time building a good relationship with a puppy. You should get a puppy only if you or someone in your family can do all of those things. Dogs need a great deal of attention and care too. They have to be fed, groomed, walked, and trained. Some dogs need lots of room. Some dogs can live in small apartments. It's up to you and your parents to decide whether you have the time to care for a dog and whether you have the room for it. If you do decide to adopt a dog, you will have more than a pet. You will have a lifelong loyal friend and companion. And that is the end of our text today. So I know that I learned a lot of facts about dogs that I didn't know, especially that puppies are born blind and deaf. I never knew that. So I hope that in listening to this text, you also learned some new facts about dogs. And I also hope that you were thinking about some questions that you still might have, because that is what you are getting ready to do now. So in your folder, you will find a paper that says day four at the top, and you have a box for an illustration and you have some lines to write. So just like last week's writing, it's going to be very similar. It says write five facts about dogs that you learned from the text and two questions that you still have. All right. So if you need to go back and listen to the story again, you can to figure out what your five facts are or even to figure out what questions you might have. Now, remember, if you have more than five facts, that's OK. You can write as many as you want, as long as you have at least five. And you might have more than just two questions about dogs. If you have more than two questions, go ahead and write those as well. All right, good luck. And I hope you guys have a great weekend and I'll see you next week. See you later.